Let's go back to 1922. Miami uh, News had a headline, and it was about a citation from an officer that said, driving with one hand and holding the girl with the other. So let's go back to the past so that we can understand a little bit of the present, see where we evolved and where we came, where we came from so that we understand where we are now. So back to 1900, dating was still called courtship. The word dating was forbidden. You could say date was more related to prostitution. Mm -hmm. So families still used to choose partners and the dates were supervised and they would go to picnics, dancing, or shopping with another adult. <coughs> 1920 to 1930, the word date then started to be used. You're more advanced, right? Uh, cars were invented, and people would go out with, to different places and not being supervised. 1940, 1950, going instead was a new term. Instead of saying I'm dating, we're really going instead. Uh, it became a used uh, when they were seriously dating. So elements of chivalry was still very much present. Etiquette expert Anna Musson, she says that basic rules of courtship was the following. Man walks on the outside, he plans and pays, he picks her up, he gives her his jacket, and he follows up. 1960 and 1970, sexual revolution. Women's movement started. The creation of birth control pill. Women started to ask men on dates. Living together became popular. 1980, marriage was the main focus, but divorce rates sky rised. In 1990, was the internet era. Dot com begun. Commitment was no longer a requirement for <coughs> sexual activities. Internet dating became widespread. In 2000, terms like girlfriend, boyfriend, partner, my significant other, became frequently used. Dating became an individualizing process. The fear of sexual transmitted diseases became more imminent and people preferred to have a steady partner. Nowadays, up to 2014, formality has gone. Dating begun, begins and ends at light speed. <laughs> Marriage consideration is very uncommon. And dating has other names. Seeing someone, having a thing, <laughs> hooking up, or hanging out. <laughs> the proliferation of dating sites and apps <laughs> revolutionize <laughs> romance in the world. Of course, at social media, uh, uh, Twitter and Facebook and Google, if a person, you get to know a person before you really do. You want to have 50 pictures of me in bikini at the beach? You got it. <laughs> Would you like to know how I'm feeling today? There you go. Or right now, there you go, right? You can know everything at social media. So this is allowing a large space for Fantasy, and um, it, it fantasy takes over, and then when you meet the person, usually that pic, that face doesn't meet, doesn't match the picture on the profile. According to Mark Lesnick, the founder of iDate, online dating is an industry that profits 1.2 billion dollars wow. per year. That was an inquisitive. Uh, whew, research I made, huh? <laughs> this business has now migrated to mobile devices. You have dating on the go. Uh, so besides Match.com, Plenty of Fish, Zeus, Kenny Harmony, that are well-known websites, there are now about, guess what? 2,500 other sites. Wow. Some of them are called, just to name a few, datehookup.com, singles.net, OKCupid. Okay now, interesting, <laughs> IBIS specialist Katie Moldway, she says that dating, the dating industry is breaking off into a billion different directions. 
and it's covering everybody's specific needs. For instance, single parent meet, divorced people meet, Christian date, speed date, Jewish si singles, veggiedate.com, oh, and datemypad.com. <laughs> <laughs> the new apps called Tinder and Catalyst, just to mention a few, can find people a few feet away from you. So let's say you are in a restaurant or in a club or whatever. You have it on your phone and it, it can match you with somebody that's just a few feet away and you can then decide if you decide to start a conversation. It's based on a, um, a notification that rings on your phone saying you got a match and then you can go talk to the person. IVE's World Report shows that the number of Americans using apps or mobile version of a dating website was 13.7 million in November 2012, more than doubled on the previous years with a number of 5.88 million. If you were born after 1980, you have never lived without a cell phone, which means that texting became the norm. Mm -hmm. With so much going on in our lives and so many options, people make Friday night plans at 6.59 on Friday. To think about that you're going to ring someone and make plans and put in your agenda that you're going to meet him or her in a week away, it's just unthinkable. Because so many options, how come something else can happen in between? The process is exhausting. And because of that, it has ceased to be fun. Usually people spend six days on the internet and then they go meet a person in one day or in 15 every, every two weeks, which should be opposite. You should spend one day in the computer arranging all your days and then go meet people during the week. <laughs> we are in the precipice <laughs> of a dating burnout. And it's normal to feel that way with so much going on. The Health Guidance Journal mentions a research made in America that shows that 250,000 individuals appears now with new kinds of fears. And they named them all. So here is one of them. Editophobia, fear of being edited or deleted. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Philophobia, fear of falling in love. Ooh. Is, uh, this one is, is difficult to pronounce. <laughs> Samarsophobia, fear of dating or love play. <laughs> Anuptophobia, fear of staying single. And one more. Chronophobia, fear of moving forward. So many fears, no wonder why we are in the verge of dating burnout. But something really amazing thought to me that at the end of the day, this is our life. This is what we do every day, breaking through fear to love. Hmm. And it all starts here, right here, with the love that we feel for ourselves first. So match this love first, and then let the universe find you the love that you want. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.